Welcome to Good Shepherd Baptist Church streaming services. Catch us at goodshepherdbaptist.org or on our Facebook page every Sunday at 10 a.m. Also join us on Mondays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. The days and times listed on your screen are also available on the website. In just a few moments, we will be joining Bishop Jeffrey L. Reeves Sr., Senior Pastor of Good Shepherd Baptist Church with today's message. We can be reached at goodshepherdbaptist.org. Follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, download the Good Shepherd app from the Apple iOS App Store, Google Play, or Amazon App Store. And giving online is easy. Go to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the Give Online banner. Or, using the app, click the Give Online icon. Stay tuned for a few more announcements after the sermon. We in that little church on the nursery road. Here we go, y'all ready? Help me, Jesus, to make 100, 99 and a half, won't do. Help me, Jesus, to make 100, 99 and a half, won't do.
your friend, so blessed to have sweet communion with you, hallelujah, Lord thank you for allowing us to feel your presence this morning, thank you for inhabiting our praise, hallelujah, we worship you, just to know you is a blessing, you are Jesus Christ, you are the son of the living God, 
What a wonder you are. How amazing you are. How, how holy. How worthy. How amazing. How wonderful. How magnificent. How awesome you are.
I have but one regret this morning that you guys can't be with us here in the sanctuary. The presence of the Lord is in this place. I mean, the power of God is in this room today. I hardly get myself together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to your name. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your presence in this age of social isolation, quarantine. The enemy wants to make us think we've been separated from you. God, we are given to know through your word that nothing can separate us from you. And even this morning, oh God, we feel your presence. We know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you are near. Oh God, we thank you now for giving us this opportunity to preach and declare your word to your people. God, I pray that you'll consecrate me to your service by the power of your grace divine. Lord, let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and may my will be lost in thine. It is in the powerful and precious and prevailing name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. My brothers and sisters, I'm happy today to report to you that there is a word from the Lord. I'm going to ask you to turn with me in your Bibles to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And while you're doing that, um, we again are just grateful to God that we have this opportunity to come before you alive. We know that our park and praise service had to be canceled because of the weather. But we thank God that we're able to come before you in this way. And we'll... Uh, do another park and praise uh, as the Lord permits. But we thank God for this opportunity. Also, this is uh, the Sunday that we normally uh, observe the Lord's Supper. So uh, somewhere during the course of uh, this sermonic presentation, wherever you are, uh, we're going to ask you to, to join us uh, in observing the Lord's Supper. If you can get a little piece of bread, a little something to drink in your hand, uh, and we'll take care of that as soon as uh, the sermon has ended. But again, we thank the Lord. Now, we pray that you'll turn with us again to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and I'm going to um, read uh, a few verses, uh, I believe beginning at maybe perhaps verse 11 or 12, and we're going to read down to verse number 22. And here's what the Word of God says in the New Living Translation of the Bible. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, Honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. Show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work. And live peace, peacefully with each other. Brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy. Encourage those who are timid and take tender care of those who are weak. Be patient with everyone. See that no one pays back evil for evil, but always try to do good to each other and to all people. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Do not scoff at prophecies. But test everything that is said. and Hold on to what is good. Stay away from every kind of evil. Amen. <clears throat> I point your attention back to verse number 18, where it says, Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong 
to Christ Jesus. I'm going to read it one more time. And this third time will be for emphasis. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. For a, few, for, for a few moments this morning, I want to talk to you from this thought, always and forever. Always and forever. There are several shifts in this text that I'd like to submit to you. The Apostle Paul uh, is telling the church of Thessalonica how to, to deal with four specific areas of their Christian experience. First of all, Paul tells them how to deal with what's going on around them. And then secondly, he tells them how to deal with those who are over them. Thirdly, he tells them how to deal with those who are with them. And then finally, he tells them how to deal with themselves. He does it in the form of admonition and advice. He shares with them here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 some recommendations that all of them are to remember. He says to them in the opening lines of the chapter that they are always to proceed from a position of assurance that their salvation remains sure. This is something that you and I need to know and understand in this season. These are trying times. and You've got to know that your anchor holds and is gripping the solid rock. This idea of being unsure, <coughs> uncertain, unstable, as it were, regarding your salvation is going to put you in a position where you will not be able to serve God in this hour. And so Paul tells the church, and these are in the verses prior to the ones that we read, that they are to always proceed from a position of assurance that their salvation remains sure. He says to them, this is a, uh, the church at Thessalonica was a fledgling congregation. They were small in number, but they were people of great faith. And in their context, their cultural context, they were being challenged because they had conformed uh, to the teachings of Christ. And he says to them, he says, listen, you've got to know who you are in this hour. You've got to know that regardless of what anyone says, that you are, in fact, a child of God. And knowing that, knowing that you have been made right in the eyesight of God, uh, positionally, amen, you got to maintain your assurance that there is nothing that can destroy your salvation. My brothers and sisters, this is what he says. He says, you got to know who you are. But then he tells them, he says, now, when you're dealing with each other, he says, you got to be willing to take different approaches with people. Why? Because everybody's needs are not the same. May I suggest to you, my friends, again, this congregation, amen, was being, they were being challenged uh, because of their uh, cultural uh, circumstances. I said they were being challenged because they didn't have a long history and tenure of being a church in that region. They were new uh, believers, and, and Paul understands that uh, what the enemy will try to do is that he will try to break them apart from the inside out. And so he says to them, you've got to make sure that you take care of one another and be willing to take different approaches in doing so. Amen. Everybody knows this, that when you are a part of a group and uh, maybe a, a church, in fact, that everybody is not on the same level. Everybody uh, does not have the same needs, and you can't deal with everybody the same way. You've got to be willing, Paul says, to take different approaches. Amen. Everybody's needs are not the same. Notice what he says in the text. He says, now the aim and the goal is to live 
peacefully with everybody. He said, but there's some people you got to warn, and then there's some people you got to encourage, and then there's some people you got to take tender care of, and then there's some people you got to be patient with. Amen. He's, you got to have a different approach because everybody does not have the same needs. He says, he says, now be sure that you make sure that you are accommodating, amen, and that you are patient with everyone. I have said this before. I'll say it again. Amen. That in seasons like this, amen, where uh, the body of Christ is stretched, one of the things that the saints have got to be aware of is that Satan wants to sow seeds of strife in our midst. He wants to get us, amen, fighting with one another over absolutely nothing. He wants to get us to the place, amen, where we take our eyes off the ball, amen, and when we start engaging each other in ways that, uh, that is not healthy and harmful to the body of Christ. And that's why uh, Paul says to the church at Thessalonica, you got enough to deal with, with the world going on around you. Don't you hurt yourself, amen, by not dealing with others in a way that is holy and healthy and helpful. He says you got to make sure, amen, that you are accommodating and you are patient with everybody. Amen. Let me, let, me, let me move from here very quickly and tell you, a child of God, that you and I have got to be confident in who we are called to be. I want you to hear this. As a matter of fact, if you're writing any notes while I preach this message, please write this down. We got to be confident in who we are called to be. We have to have the courage to encourage ourselves to become all we should be. And lastly, we got to care enough to comfort those of us who are not all that they should be. Let me try that one more time. We got to be confident in who we are called to be. Amen. And have the courage to encourage others around us to become all that they are supposed to be, but at the same time care enough to comfort those who are not all that they should be. Can I tell you, amen, that where you may not be wearing the shoe this morning, the shoe, other shoe can drop, amen, and it could be your size. You got to be careful about how you deal with each other. But it is verse 18, my brothers and sisters, that captures my attention, amen, and, uh, the most in this passage, I was reading all of it, and I was trying to flesh it out, and I, I couldn't get away from verse 18. It is probably the most familiar part of the passage, but, but it is there in verse 18, my brothers and sisters, in the midst of all of this advice and admonition, that we are told to always be joyful. We are told to never stop praying, and we are told to be thankful in all circumstances. And what I'm asking, I'm asking this, I'm asking everybody who's listening to me. In fact, I'm asking God, and this is not a rhetorical question. This is really a question that when I raised it in my spirit, I really needed an answer to it. I ask you, is it, is it really possible for a person to be joyful always? Is it, is it possible for a person to maintain a prayerful heart without ever becoming exhausted? Is it possible for a person to consistently have the presence of mind to be genuinely thankful in every circumstance? That's the question, my brothers and sisters, because I know that even though while I'm trying to maintain my confidence as a child of God, I have my moments from time to time, that while I'm dealing with all of the evil that's going on around me, amen, there are some things that are going on inside of me, and sometimes if I'm not careful, Careful how I interact with other people, amen, is less than desirable. And then sometimes how other people act with me, amen, is undesirable. And you wrestle with all of that. And at the same time, I'm, I'm saying to myself that in verse 18, am I told to just walk around with a smile on my face all the time, whether it's real or fake? Am I told that I'm never supposed to feel anything other than thanksgiving? Am I being told that I'm never supposed to raise rhetorical questions like I'm raising in the sermon? Am, am I supposed to pretend like I have all the answers, amen, and that I'm always praying, amen, uh, a premeditated prayer? 
prayers. Prayers as a precursor, amen, to everything that I do in life. I, I, listen, I got to tell you, child of God, I wish that were my testimony, amen, but that's not my testimony. I raise this question, amen, is it possible for a person to do what is being asked of us in verse 18 of 1 Thessalonians 5? Because this is the requirement, amen. I raise the question because this is the recommendation. I raise the question because this is what Paul is telling us to remember and all I'm saying is is if this is God's will for me will somebody please tell me how to get this done somebody please tell me what's your secret how is it that you are able to always be joyful why how is it that you in every situation you are always praying and always thankful somebody help me to understand how you do it because sometimes my brothers and sisters amen sometimes I'm praying but other times I'm crying. I got to just testify. There are times, my brothers and sisters, where I am joyful and then there are other times where I'm at my wit's end. There are times, child of God, where I am thankful but then there are times when I, if I'm not careful, I can be overly critical amen and unappreciative. I, I need to understand how I can grow up in this area amen because these, my brothers and sisters, is are seasons that call for mature Christians. This ain't the hour for the baby saints. This is the hour where people have got to grow up and learn how to toughen up. I wish I had a witness here. And learn how to take something besides a pill. This is an hour, child of God, where the saints of God have got to realize that God has called them to the kingdom for such a time as this. And our representation, our reflection has got to, amen, uh, show the world, amen, that we are trusting and believing in a God who has not put us in this position to leave us or abandon us but but the same God that opened the door amen and made it possible for us to get here is the same God that's able to deliver us from these difficult times I raise the question is it possible but can I tell you amen what I love about the Lord is that he doesn't mind me raising questions amen as a matter of fact while I was writing this and raising these questions rhetorically in my mind in an attempt to try shamanically to answer the question for all of us as to whether or not we can consistently whether or not we can always and in every circumstance maintain this posture and position. Amen. May I suggest to you that while I was writing it, the Holy Spirit said to me, listen, unpack the requests and then you'll understand why they are requirements and more importantly you'll understand how to respond I said say what now I said the Holy Spirit said look at what I'm saying I need you to unpack amen the request and then you'll understand why what I'm requesting is a requirement and not only will you understand that why that what I'm requesting why it is a requirement you'll understand how to respond I said okay so I started looking at it the text said that we are to always be joyful and, and first of all I got to I got to really tell you that I want to pluck myself in the head because I understand that biblical joy, amen, is not like natural joy. Amen. The joy that the Bible talks about is not a joy that is absent, amen, of problems and pains and difficulties and distresses. No. When the Bible talks about joy, amen, really, how can I say this uh, uh, in, the, in the Septuagint, uh, 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 how can I say this, uh, a part of the Bible, or the rendering of the Bible, that, uh, that the word joyful literally means to rely on God. I can't get nobody to help me here. And can I tell you, amen, that what, what Paul is telling the church at Thessalonica is that, listen, the only way you're going to maintain your confidence amen, in these crazy times, amen, you got to rely on God's power. The only way you're going to appropriately interact amen, with your brothers and sisters and treat them on the basis of their needs and glorify me. I can't get nobody to help me here. He says, you're going to have to rely on my power.
power. Because if you rely on your power, there's going to come a season where the stress will be unbearable. And then you're going to suck your teeth and roll your eyes and walk away from your responsibilities because you don't feel like it. And the reason why you don't feel like it is because the energy that you once had has been expended. You are less left exhausted. But can I tell you, that's when you trust in your own power. But when you trust in the power of God, the power of God does not run out. The power of God is inexhaustible. The power of God is unlimited. The power of God is unmatched. I dare somebody this morning to try and trust the power of God. What you can't do in your own power, you can do in the power of God. May I tell you, child of God, there's a power of God that's resident in you. There's a power of God that works in you. There's a power of God that if you will activate it, I declare that you'll surprise yourself. I wish I had a witness here. The very things that Paul is suggesting that the church be doing in this hour, amen, you, I'm telling you, you saying it's impossible. I can't do it. There's no way in the world. I don't know what they asked us to do. There's no, I can't do that. No, you can't do it by yourself. But I want to just, if I can echo, amen, the writer of the scripture and tell everybody what you need to do is get to a place called finally. I wish I had a witness here. Finally, when you stop trying to do it yourself, finally, I wish I had a witness here. Well, you done, you done wore yourself out and wore your fingernails down to the quick. Y'all don't want to help me here. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I wish I had a witness here. Can somebody help me preach this and tell somebody near you, tell them that your extremity is God's opportunity. If you would just learn, my brothers and sisters, hey, man, you can always rely on God's power. And to know that God's power is inexhaustible and unlimited and unmatched, hey, amen, is the thing I wish I had a witness here that keeps you joyful. Hey, amen, I'm good. I can't get nobody to help me here. I have a confidence, hey, amen, because I'm relying on a strength that is not my own. I said I have a confidence, hey, amen, that didn't come from my ability, my ingenuity. I have a confidence. I wish I had a witness here. Can I tell you, it's from some other source. Amen. I wish I had. I'm just thankful to God that it's been deposited in me. I wouldn't have it without the Lord. I wish I wouldn't be who I am. You looking at me and you want to pat me on the back. Get your hands off me. It ain't me. I can't take no credit for this. God gets all the glory. If I do anything right to God, be the glory. I wish I had a witness here. If I live like God has called me to live to God be the glory I wish I if I'm able to love them that hate me to God be the glory if I'm able to pray for them amen that despitefully use me and bless them that could I don't take no credit for that God gets all the glory I got, got to let y'all go. He, just said, he said, we got to always be joyful. Always, always. I said, okay, I got that first one. I understand now, amen, why the request is a requirement, praise the Lord, amen, to rely on his power. But then he said, we ought to never stop praying. Amen. May I suggest to you that when I unpack, amen, this phrase to never stop praying, amen, what the Holy Spirit pointed out to me is that uh, prayer is so that you and I can receive God's perspective. Let me tell you right there. It's not just so that you can have a conversation. Amen. It's not just so that you can vent your feelings, but prayer is the way in which you're able to receive God's perspective about your life. Let me try one more time. You got to always pray you got to learn my brothers and sisters amen to use prayer as a tool and as an opportunity to see things in life the way the lord sees them i say to you so often amen that when you look at life through the lenses of god you're able to see the truth despite the facts amen that's why you got to never stop praying amen because if you stop praying you're only going to see things through your own human perspective and our human perspective is limited and flawed and skewed come on help me here amen can I tell you, amen, that right now while we're living in this world, we see through a glass darkly. Come on, help me here. Oh, can I help 
you. I got my windows to my truck tinted. Amen. The other week, uh, week four last in the front. Amen. I got my. I don't know why I got my windows tinted. The truck is raggedy, but I'm going to hold on to it. Amen. Until Jesus return or until I leave. Once one or two going to happen. Amen. But I praise the Lord. I'm holding on to the truck. It ain't worth nothing, but I got the wind. I spend money. I got a radio like somebody crazy. Cause I, let me tell you something. The pandemic will make you spend money. Anyway, I got a radio and I got the windows tinted. I wish I had a witness here. And the man told me, he said, don't you wash it. Don't roll them down for three days. Let it cure. It's going to be fine. Well, about that third day, I looked out the window and it looked, it was dark like it was supposed to be. Um, now, when I drive my truck, I see through a glass dark. I can't get nobody to help me here. And if anybody knows anything, my brothers and sisters, amen, about seeing through a glass darkly, especially, amen, at the, right now when it's, the clouds are in the sky, amen, and uh, there's overcast. I mean, sometimes it can be real dark. I had to, looking out my side windows, looking out my uh, my rear view mirrors, I had to look carefully because I won't, I can't get nobody to help me here, I won't looking at a glass that was as clear as it used to be. Now that the tint is in there, amen, I'm looking through a glass darkly and sometimes I got to take a double take before I make a left or a right turn because I can't see. I, I like the fact that can't nobody see me, but I, I can't see as clearly as I could before I got the windows tinted. Here's where I'm going. If you'll just walk with me for a few more moments. Amen. My brothers and sisters, can I tell you, my brothers and sisters, that when we pray, it clears up the tent. Come on. When you and I pray, we're able to see things clear up. When we pray, there's an illumination of the spirit that is made available to us and the things that others can't see in the natural you can see in the spirit i wish i had let me tell you something child of god amen the devil wants to make you scared he wants you to cower somewhere in a corner he wants you to concede defeat but i'm telling the devil right now it ain't gonna happen i'm able to maintain my confidence because i see my predicament through god's perspective see the see what you didn't realize devil is that i got a prayer life i can't get nobody to help me here what you didn't realize is that while you were trying to knock me off my feet it just drove me to my knees and when i fell on my knees i was able to talk to god and god showed me his perspective oh find you somebody if you can and tell them say don't you ever stop praying i don't care who tells you that prayer is elementary i don't care who tells you amen that prayer amen is understated and an oversimplification i, I listen i don't care who tells you that praying to God is just for the weak. Amen. You tell them, well, that's what I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm weak, but I'm praying to the one that I know is strong. I don't mind. I can't get nobody to talk to me. I don't mind admitting my weaknesses. Come on, help me here. I don't mind my brothers and sisters admitting the fact that I ain't got it all together, but I thank God I can pray to God. Do I have a witness here? Can I tell you, child of God, when you pray, you receive a revelation, amen, about God's perspective. And I want to tell somebody, amen, but I'll share this with you, amen, it's the benefit of uh, peeking into the overflow of my prayer life. Amen. But I've been praying. I'm telling you, child of God. And I, I told you this, I think, on last Monday night. And I'm going to say it again. And I'm going to say it again and again and again until the Lord tells me something different. Amen. I, I, need, I need to talk, amen, to all of my fatalists who may be listening to me. I need to talk to people, amen, who are thinking that the, our current situation, amen, is going to continue past the point where God wants it to go. I'm here to tell you that this too shall pass. I wish y'all would help me. I Listen, I ain't trying to prophesy something to make you feel good. I'm telling you what I receive by way of prayer. I'm telling you, child of God, let me tell you something. It's, first of all, I don't know exactly when it's going to be over, but I can promise you, pray, praise the Lord, that it's going to take a shift. Amen. It's going to take a turn. I'm telling you right now, amen, it's not going to be a dominant theme. It's not going to be the topic of discussion. I, I wish I had a, you got to realize my brothers and sisters amen that whenever you see somebody take a real a, 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 a real 
problem that real people are doing are dealing with and using it amen in the midst of a political cycle i wish i had let me tell you something in about three months i wish i had a witness here amen listen i'm not suggesting that the pandemic gonna be over but i am i am suggesting amen that people's confidence is going to come back amen because i'm telling you all these things are cycles all of these things are seasons i wish i had a witness here and may i suggest to you that even this season that may be stressing somebody out the lord is depositing seeds in the ground and if you can just hang in there i wish i had somebody amen as long as the earth shall remain there shall be seed time and harvest god is getting ready to bring something out of this and not only is god getting ready to bring something out of this he gonna bring us out of it i wish i i'm telling you what i heard the lord say to me amen that this too shall pass and you walking around getting ready to change all of your life over something that is temporary and transitory you just better stand still you better hold your hope right here god is getting ready to move in our midst but you ain't going to get this unless you pray. Then let me give you this last one. I'm going to get you all out of here, child of God. He said, always be joyful. He said, never stop praying. But then he said, be thankful in all circumstances. And I'm telling you, I was, I was rejuvenated. Amen. As I unpacked the first two. Amen. I kind of got my little second win back. But when I got to number three, I said, see, 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 you're always playing with somebody. You're always playing with somebody. You mean to tell me that I'm supposed to be thankful in all circumstances, the Holy Ghost said, do what I said, boy. I told you to unpack the request, and you'll understand why it's a requirement. Let me try one more time. So, so, so the Bible says, be thankful in all circumstances. And most of us think the operative word there in the phrase is thankful. Amen. But really, the operative word in the phrase is circumstance. Now, think about circumstances. Think about where you are in life. And then you must think about where is God in juxtaposition to where you are? I can't get nobody to help me here. And what you got to understand is that what the Bible teaches us is that no matter where we are, God is there. Let me try one more time. So, so, if, so if to always be joyful is to rely on God's power, and if to never stop praying is to receive God's perspective, being thankful in all circumstances is to rejoice in his presence. I wish I had a witness there. Why? Because God is present in my circumstance. I can't get nobody to help me here. Listen, you can say what you want to say. Hey Amen. In this age of isolation, it's good to know, hey amen, that God has not left us nor forsaken on us. Amen. The God of heaven has never abandoned us. Come on. He's with us right now. That's why you can have confidence. Amen. In crazy and chaotic times. Amen. You can rejoice. You can, you can celebrate the fact that I may be in what I'm in. I may be dealing with what I'm dealing with, but God is present with me. I'm not necessarily rejoicing in the circumstance by itself. I'm rejoicing in the presence of God in the midst of my circumstance because think i can't get nobody to help me here circumstances take on a new a certain nuance when the lord is present come on help me here when, when the lord is present in my circumstance then i understand that nothing that my circumstance may be designed to do to me amen can it can't happen as long as the lord is there you understand the presence of the lord is a victorious presence amen i wish i had a witness here. and if you if you got the lord on your side praise the lord i'm here to tell you he's more than the whole world against you and that's where i want to close and tell you amen that this is what paul is telling the church he says this and i want to simplify amen your salvific experience because you're going to come under a whole lot of challenges you're going to have to deal with a whole lot of things but let me give you a little admonition let me give you some advice let me tell you some basic simple things that if you do this you'll be able to make it amen you ain't got to know everything about everything you ain't got to know about the science i wish had a witness here of infectious diseases all you got to do is know amen is that no matter what kind of power the disease has it ain't got more power than God that's all I'm trying to tell you amen when you get to that place amen when you don't understand amen what's going on in the world in the midst of political unrest I can't get nobody to help me here amen please understand amen that God is still on the throne there may be somebody in the White House and there may be somebody in the State House but I 
declare that God is still on the throne. And you got to have God's perspective about this and understand, amen, that no matter what I'm going through, amen, God is right there with us. Now, here are the simplifications, child of God, that we ought to rely on the power of God, that we ought to receive the perspective of God, and that we ought to rejoice in the presence of God. And now the second question that we need to answer as we go to our seat, and that question is, amen, why should we do all these things? May I suggest to you that the Bible says, because this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. I wish I had a witness here. I don't know about it, y'all, but I want to do the will of God. I don't want the winds of change. I don't want the vicissitudes of life to blow upon my frame until I forget who I am in the Lord. I want it to be said of me, amen, that when life was real rough, I still held on to God's unchanging hand. Is there anybody besides me that wants to do the will of God? This is God's will. Amen. This is my responsibility. As a matter of fact, let me try that one more time and tell you that God's will is my responsibility. Come on, you ought to write that down. If you ain't got a pen, then take your hands and lay them on yourself and anoint yourself and tell yourself that God's will is my responsibility. I know that I have an idea. I know that I have feelings and I want to do things a different way. I want to handle this hard time in my life in a way that conveniences me. But I heard Paul telling me that I have a responsibility to carry out God's requirements. God's will is my responsibility always and forever. I ain't got no choice in the matter that every time I get up in the morning regardless of what may be facing me despite what I may be feeling I got to tell myself self this is still the day that the Lord had made and I will rejoice and be glad in it I got to tell myself that while I'm going through the day and being challenged by the enemy on every side I remind myself that no weapon that is formed against me shall be able to prosper and every lie that rises is up against you shall come to nothing. But I wish I had a worshiper somewhere that will begin to thank God and begin to praise his name and understand that I gotta do this always. I gotta do it till he calls me home. I gotta put everything in the Lord's hands. I gotta trust him with everything that's going on in my life. Do I have a witness Somebody that can help me preach Remind yourself that God has everything under control And I want to tell you what I see the end be I see it in the spirit I don't see it in the natural I don't feel it in the emotion But I see it in the spiritual And I declare If you'll hear me today I want to tell you what God's word says It said eyes have not seen And ears have not heard It has yet to end the heart of man what God has some in store for them that love him we gotta get out of here but can somebody where you are come on get up off the couch lift your hand to God and say God I thank you that there's more to come come on praise his name I don't care what the negative naysayers are saying I don't care what the ungodly unrighteous 
thundings are proclaiming yep. across the airwaves. Yep. God, I believe your word. Yep. I'll try it one more time. Can you help me? Yep. Praise the Lord yep. and say, Lord, I believe yep. that my eyes haven't seen. Yep. I believe that my ears haven't heard with the wonderful thing yep, that you have in store for me yep, there's more coming yep, after this yep, god i feel it in my soul yep, i said more is coming yep, can i tell you child of god yep, that god ain't gonna let us yep, go out like this yep, have i got a witness yep, i said god ain't gonna allow us yep, to go out like this yep, have I got no witness? He's going to work it out so that we'll leave like the Hebrew children left out of Egypt. We're on our way to worship God. And not only are we on our way to worshiping God in a way that is deeper, in a way that's more reverent, we're on our way with the spoils y'all ain't gonna help me here can i tell you that i'm on my way to worship god carrying in my bosom the work of my hands y'all ain't gonna help me can you find you somebody and tell them when this is all over i'm coming out better than when i went in yes yes i feel the holy ghost reminding us that i've got a reason to praise his name always and forever as long as god is still on the throne i will lift my hands i will open up my mouth I will praise his holy name always 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 and forever hallelujah I ain't gonna take a day off I'm gonna praise him every day from the rising Lord I feel the Holy Spirit I said from the rise of the sun to the going down of the same I ain't gonna let my situation strangle my praise out of my throat my, if my throat get hoarse my soul will make its boast in the Lord if I can't open my mouth I'll weigh my hand cause I'm gonna praise a God that ain't never turned his back on me he walks God I feel the Holy Spirit I said he walks with me he talks with me and in the time of trouble he tells me that I am his own who wouldn't praise a God like that let everybody I said let everybody wherever you are lift your voice lift your voice lift your voice lift your voice raise your praise come on wave your flag right in the face of the enemy let the devil know i may be in crisis but i'm also in covenant Woo! i may be in a situation but I have a relationship with God and God. And devil, you need to know you ain't going to come between me and the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to rely on his power. And if you don't mind, devil, I don't want to listen to you. Because I've already received the Lord's perspective. I may not know how long I'm going to be what I'm, where I'm at. But God has already shown me how it's going to turn out. 
I can't get nobody to help me. Come on, find you somebody if you need somebody. If not, just tell yourself, tell yourself, in the end, we win. Yeah. I said, in the end, we gonna win. And when we win, it's gonna be worth everything that you have to go through. Hallelujah. 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 I said, in the end, we gonna win anyway. I don't do too much talking to the devil. I do some ordering, some instructing. But this little pseudo conversation I'm getting ready to have is for your sake. You sometimes, by the way you behave, by the decisions that you make, the commitments that you maintain, you gotta live a life That reminds the devil, listen, you, I know you're an aggravation, but you defeated. You're a nuisance, and that's all you are. And I have, I, have a, I have a choice to decide whether or not I'm going to let you get on my nerves. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Always. And forever. I know that's the song. I started to sing it at the beginning of the sermon. I said that might mess the whole sermon up. But you think about it now. It'll go. It'll go. It'll go. Yeah. Thinking about spending that time with the Lord. Amen. And don't let nothing that's going on in your life create a chasm. Create disturbance. Create distance between you and the Lord. Don't, don't, don't. No. Simplify. Because let me tell you as I close and we get ready to take the Lord's Supper. If you, while I'm talking, if you can go get you something for communion and listen to me at the same time, I'd appreciate it. But listen, child of God, What God requests, what Paul recommends, what our relationship with God requires, it doesn't change because we're going through a stretching season. Listen, when we were here in the building, We're able to choose our own praying ground as the old saints would say. Pre-pandemic, we understood that God had an expectation that he placed upon our lives. But I want you to understand even the more that in the midst of this season, God's expectations haven't changed. You say, well, well, Bishop, I'm in crisis. I, I don't feel as confident as I used to because of the circumstance that I'm in. And I say to you that I know how you feel. What may be helpful to both you and I is that we will continue to rely on God's power. We will stay on our knees so that we can receive God's perspective. That we would remain thankful and rejoice in the Lord's presence. You do know that the Lord will inhabit the praises of his people. I dare you to praise God in the midst of this. God will get right in where you are. He'll get in your praise. Hallelujah. God will insert his presence in your space. You do know that in the presence of the Lord there is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. 
always never forget this the first service that we had away from the building I told you that you and I are going to have to be stubborn about our spirituality I want to say it again be stubborn don't let the devil get a foothold nowhere these are praying times. These are trusting times. These are times when we must continue to praise God and be very intentional about it. Amen. If you, if you don't, the devil will take all the little bits you had in the Lord before this time came. Don't you let him have your mind. Don't you let him have your heart. Hallelujah. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. We pray, Lord, that it has fallen upon good ground. And beyond the rhetoric, someone has received a revelation from the Holy Spirit. I pray that, Lord, all of us will walk away really truly, intentionally, and consistently endeavoring to maintain our covenant relationship with you. The same way, Lord, that you promised never to leave us, may we pledge and promise, Lord, never to leave you. Hallelujah. We know what this is. We know what this is. The devil just trying to break us up. That's all this is. We done been down this road before under a different set of circumstances. We are not ignorant to the devil's schemes and devices. We know what the devil is trying to do. This, ain't, this is not just about physiological illnesses and aberrations. This is not just about political and systemic evil. We know, Lord, that this is more than what we can see with our naked eye. So, Lord, we attack even now the root. While others are cutting off limbs, branches, and leaves, Lord, we attack it at the root in the name of Jesus. We declare victory over the enemy right now, right now, right now, right now. We're in the midst of battle declaring victory right now. We declare it in Jesus' name. For all, Lord, who are struggling, suffering in some way, who's listening to me this morning, Lord, I declare victory. Lord, I say it till they can say it. Lord, I say it until they can believe it. I say it until they can trust it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And it is so. We ask it in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Come on, get your communion in your hand. Father, praise to you. Leads us in song. Thank you. 
Let's try one more time. Oh, commune, commune, everybody sing. with the saints hallelujah and I'm never going to be satisfied with the way things are I was talking to a dear friend and pastor this week and he was sharing with me that this is the new normal and what we got to do and uh I shared with him, I said, well, I said, one thing about it, I said, God is still on the throne. I said, and the same God who permitted this has the power to make another change. And things can go in another direction. I'm not going to say what's going to be forever. And I'm not going to do that. I said, no, God is still able. Hallelujah. We're in our lifetime, I believe we're just seeing as people of faith, where our faith, our fellowship, and our, even our finances are being challenged. But let me tell you what God is doing. God is working a miracle in all of those areas. Did you hear what I said? God is working a miracle in all of those areas. And I want to just encourage everyone to can stay consistent, remain faithful. Amen. This too is going to pass. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Things are always going to change until the return of the Lord. As long as the earth shall remain. 
Don't, don't get stuck in no rut. Don't settle into this, into a place of convenience. Don't do it. You ain't going to be worth two cents when this is over. Amen. You got to be stubborn and about your spirituality. And, and doggone it. Amen. Amen. The things that, that we should have been working on during this time, God has given us space to work on them. To work on them without interruption, without hindrance. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right. We still celebrate God for sending Jesus Christ into the world. We honor God by remembering the life, the ministry, the death, the suffering, the death and the resurrection of our Lord on the cross, from the cross, excuse me, or from the grave. And we thank God that the Bible teaches us that whenever we do this, to symbolically eat the bread which represents his body, to drink the cup which represents his spilled blood, we are told to do it in remembrance of him. The Bible teaches us that Jesus instituted this practice while observing the feast of Passover with his disciples, during the course of the meal, he took the bread, he broke it, blessed it and gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you, he said. And then in the same manner, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he said unto them, drink all of it. This cup represents the New Testament of my blood, which is shed so that your sins may be forgiven. The word says, and when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Hallelujah. Always and forever. Yes. Come on, we got strength today. Amen. To make it through, it's only a test. Hallelujah. Huh? Hallelujah. He's given us the grace to yes, pass it. God. Come on and celebrate with us. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Put your hands together. Stand on your feet. Put your hands together. Stand on your feet. Put your hands together. Stand on your feet. Here we go.
Thank you for joining us today for Good Shepherd Streaming Services. Giving online is easy. Go to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the Give Online banner. Or using the app, click the Give Online icon. Follow us on social media on Facebook at Good Shepherd Baptist, Twitter and Instagram at Good Shepherd BC. And the Good Shepherd app is yet another great tool to keep connected. Download the Good Shepherd app from the Apple iOS App Store, Google Play, or Amazon App Store. We air every Sunday on Fox Richmond at 7.30 a.m. Please watch and support the broadcast. Good Shepherd Baptist Church, 2223 South Crater Road in Petersburg, Virginia. You may call at 804-732-5969. Building a church, developing a community expanding services, and impacting lives. We thank you for the support of this ministry. See you next time.